everybody. So I've been seeing a lot of people doing some flowery things and it's spring and we're trapped in our own yard, which is beautiful by the way, but we're still, you know, sequestering ourselves and going to be for quite some time. So I thought I'd bring a little spring inside and um, try my hand at some potential blooming flowering trees. So the first one I'm gonna do is just gonna be like a branch of, of a tree. This painting was a pour I did, I don't know, probably a year ago, and I used house paint and it's all cracked and annoying and stuff, and I didn't like it at all. So I decided that I was going to um, cover it up. And this is gonna be my background. There is a little bit of silicone in this paint in the form of OGX Coconut Milk Hair Serum. You can get this at Walgreens, Walmart. The first ingredient must be dimethicone. That's a type of safer silicone for me. I have lung issues, which is why I'm hiding out from the coronavirus because it's a lung attacking, mutating thing. So my husband also has asthma and we both just got off the regular flu so we're not taking any chances. So I'm gonna be painting with you today. And I'm just gonna stir a couple drops in. I don't like to stir too much. The less the better, less is more in the case of dimethicone, silicone. And I'm not gonna put any silicone in any of my other colors, just this base blue. There's already, you know, paint color underneath it. So there's no chance that my white canvas is gonna show through because <laughs> It ain't now. So I'm going to go ahead and do a base of this blue color. I had it left over from another thing I did anyway. And I think I might, though, add a little bit of interest with just regular blue. We'll see how much this spreads, and then I'll put some more on. Some of that undercolor might show through and look okay, actually. Yeah, that's really sewing up. Now, this is going to be a wet-on-wet wet technique. I'm going to be deliberately painting a blossoming tree over this while it's still wet. It's really pretty. I like. Probably could use just a little more. Let's scrape in the canvas a little bit. also trying to use fewer paper towels so I'm using a lot of my husband's old t-shirts and my old t-shirts and stuff leggings and stuff that are too ratty to be donated so we don't use as much landfill I still I still use paper towels in my swiping just because honestly it's necessary I guess it looks better I think I'm going to get a little bit of green for this bottom part of the picture, especially if I'm going to make a hole. I'm coming back, I promise. Just going to put some green down here. Maybe you get a little Not too much of that. Just, like I said, to add a little interest in the background. I think the first colors I'm probably going to try, since this is experimental, I haven't done any kind of blossoms like this. I've done 
like a balloon smash blossoms on a wet or on a dry background and they turn out really round and symmetrical and while that's cool if I'm making like hollyhocks or something like that it's not so great if I want more crinkly edges I've got a couple little balloons I've blown up but if they don't make the right kind of little smashes I'll use something else um, I, can, I also have this plastic spoon that I use the back of sometimes and can smash tiny flowers in. So look at how this is selling up. That's kind of cool. But the first thing I'm going to do is draw in my tree. And I don't like things perfectly centered. So this is just um, a mixture. Oh, I forgot to write it on here. This is a mixture of burnt umber. Pretty sure it's umber, yeah. It's uh, a tube paint that I had, so it's very dense as far as the color. So I didn't put a whole lot in here because it was almost black. And that's the brown I'm gonna be using. I'm also gonna be mixing a tiny bit of black in the tree trunk, maybe even a tiny bit of gold just to add a little something. So I'm going to make the decision that my tree is going to start right about here. And I'm going to go this time with the form and shape of a cherry blossom tree. They are very, very wiggly as far as their branches. Pour too much. So my blossoms are going to be relatively small. Since this is a, a tree. All right. Get a tiny little bit of black. All of these paints are mixed with um, a little bit of Floetrol, and then just a dollop of Liquitex pouring medium. And I do that because I really like the texture that the Liquitex gives me in my paintings. And they also stay kind of shiny. Now, cherry blossom trees are pretty dark as far as their trunks. So. I'm going to really play around with the black here. Now I'm just going to take... I'll choose... My favorite little tool is actually a clay forming tool. Where did I put it? It's in here somewhere. There. No, that's, that's the other one. This guy, I don't know why, but I really like it a lot, so... I think it's because I can get a point. Now remember, there's no silicone in these paints, but there's so much silicone in the underpainting that it's going to give me cells anyway. I'm okay with that. Just adds a little texture. I'm just going to keep wiping off the ends. I think if this turns out how I'm hoping it will, I might end up doing a huge um, controlled abstract painting of Cherry Blossom Avenue with a path down the middle. Wouldn't that be kind of awesome to have behind your couch or behind your bed? Just be a big three foot by five foot avenue of cherry blossom trees. I think it would be pretty cool. Let me make that go down. Hey, get out of there, 
Hmm. Now, a lot of people would be concerned that the underpainting was cracked and had a lot of cracks and stuff, fissures in it, but it's a landscape. It's going to have cherry blossoms and tree, and any texture or cracking is just going to add to the, the coolness of the abstract work. So try not to stress yourself out so much about cracks and fissures in your work, especially... If you see something in your work when you're done, that you might be able to embellish. All right. I feel like I want one more lower hanging branch to live kind of right there. I might have just ruined it, but we'll see. You see, am I putting my paint in the way? No. Okay. Oops, just dip the lid of this into the glue. I'm not the, the neatest of painters. Let's put a little tiny bit. I think I ruined it after all. Might look pretty cool. I think I'm eventually gonna probably put a little horizon line like it's on a hillside right there. Put a little bit of that in right now. Can even do. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up for the end. I tried several different tools for putting in the blossoms, including my finger, and none of them got that actual lushness that I was looking for in a blossoming tree. Um, I'm kind of going for a little bit of a folk art look. So I'm going to let this dry, and then the second part, the second video, will be uh, painting in those details that I wanted to get and couldn't with a wet canvas. Um, <clears throat> and I'll probably use it few different kinds of tools too. I've learned a q-tip makes great blossoms on a dry canvas. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel for more art content. Hit that little bell if you want to be notified when my next video goes up. There's also a link below to my PayPal tip jar if you feel so inclined, as well as links to my art web page and my Facebook art page. I hope you're staying safe and that you have a great day.